Welcome to a tutorial on electronics and in this uh, section on circuit theory today we're basically gonna talk about the Norton's theorem okay so this Norton's theorem is another uh, one of the you know most important network theorems is concerned and also like the uh, you know the Thevenin theorem that we discussed previously uh, helps simplify a complicated electrical network okay so as far as the uh, statement of the uh, Norton's theorem goes okay it appears as something like this I'll just show, show you in a, in a very short while over here okay okay so there you go that's the statement of the Norton's theorem well that's quite a big statement I guess well it says that uh, any network that means an electrical network of course so any network consisting of independent or dependent voltage or current sources and linear bilateral network elements can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source in parallel with a resistance okay and the current source being the short circuited current across the load terminal and the resistance being the internal resistance of the source network looking through the open circuited load terminals respectively so well in this uh, big statement as you can get okay so the main uh, you know the meaning of the statement is that in case of uh, any uh, sort of electrical network okay, consisting of independent or uh, dependent sources I mean it could be either voltage or current sources maybe and also linear bilateral network elements like say for example resistors okay so that the this entire network can basically be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source in parallel with a resistance now this resistance that we're talking about over here is of course the uh, equivalent or rather the internal resistance of the circuit okay and of course this current source okay uh, that we're gonna basically uh, uh, I mean use in the uh, simplified network diagram would be the uh, you know the short circuited current across the load terminals okay and the equivalent resistance being the internal resistance of the uh, source network now this equivalent resistance can also be uh, you know compared to the Thevenin resistance and they're quite the same okay so I'll just uh, give an example with the network over here okay so uh, just hang in there for a while so back in the uh, tutorial on the Thevenin's theorem okay there's your network okay so back in our previous tutorial on the Thevenin's theorem I already described what a linear bilateral network means and also uh, what uh, basically you know uh, could happen okay so over here so basically um, in this uh, network that I'm just uh, discussing over here as I said it consists of I mean it, this is basically a linear network and it consists of bilateral circuit elements like for example these resistors okay resistors 1 to resistor 4 okay and it, as the theorem says over here that this thing can be replaced by an equivalent circuit consisting of a current source in parallel with a resistance so keeping that in mind this should be the end product of what should I mean what we should actually obtain upon simplification of our network okay so there you go so this is exactly uh, the diagram that I just you know uh, brought over here to show y'all okay so this is exactly the simplified Norton's equivalent network okay so as you can see it consists of a current source right here and along with a resistance that's the internal resistance of this entire network if we had applied Norton's theorem to simplify it okay and uh, that is you know obtained over here now let me just mention that this internal resistance that we're talking about that's the R int is the same as that of the uh, Thevenin's resistance that we had obtained in our previous tutorial on Thevenin's theorem okay so without much further delay we shall quickly go to the steps of solving and or rather simplifying the network with the Norton's theorem so next up are the steps of solving a network or rather simplifying a network with Norton's theorem okay so here comes step number one which says remove RL now RL is actually uh, as I said uh, we need to select a resistance across which or rather through which we're basically uh, you know gonna uh, take the short circuit current so let's take 
R4 over here as our load resistance. So here R4 will be our load resistance. Okay, so since R4 is our load resistance, we need to remove RL from this network first. Okay, and upon doing so, this is exactly what we're going to obtain right over here. Okay, so there you go. That's what we'll basically obtain if we would remove our, I mean, uh, the R4 that serves as a load resistance, this RL, uh, from our network under discussion. Okay, so after we've basically removed RL from our network, we go straight to the step number two. Now, here's step number two, which states that find the ISC, that's the short circuited current through the shorted load terminals. Now, for example, over here, the shorted, I mean, the load terminals are basically uh, the nodes C and B, respectively. And now, if we need to find the short circuit current, we need to uh, short this terminal first. Okay, so hang on for a while. Okay, that goes fine and bingo we've shorted the load terminals okay so now it says that uh, by shorting the load terminals we basically obtain this network over here and now the short circuit current needs to be found out okay uh, right at this uh, the shorted path over here so here we're basically going to obtain our short circuit current and this short circuit current uh, i mean uh, this current through the uh, shorted load terminal is actually the required short circuit current that's isc okay now looking at this network over here in order to find the short circuit current we can see that this voltage source should supply a current i okay through the uh, i mean through this loop over here and uh, as you can see, it'll basically supply a current. Okay, I'll just, you know, uh, modify it a little bit. Okay, so that's better. So now this voltage source will supply a current, uh, which should first flow through R1 and then divide itself, okay, into the two paths, uh, one through R3 and the other through the resistance R2. Okay, so here a current, let's say I would flow through, uh, uh, I mean flow from, you know, uh, the supply voltage that's Vs. Okay, it'll go through R1 and then divide itself at the uh, node A into two parts. Let's call them R I1 and the other one over here. Let's just call it I2. And now notice that the current that should flow through R2, uh, which one? Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, branch of the current that we've just named R. I2 over here is actually the short circuit current which we are basically trying to find out. So the short circuit current is nothing but the current through the resistance R2. Okay, so now if we just go towards finding it, then basically let's find out the equivalent resistance of this circuit that it just offers to this voltage source. Okay, so the equivalent resistance in this circuit will just be given by R1 in series and R and we have the R2 and R3 in parallel. So that gives us R1 plus R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So that's the equivalent resistance offered by this network to this voltage source Vs. Okay, so now we need to find out the uh, current I that should flow through this circuit as a whole. Okay, so this would basically be given by Vs divided by the equivalent resistance over here. So that way we're basically uh, going to get it as something like this, Vs divided by this whole of the resistance, that's R1 plus R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So there you go. That's the uh, current that, that is basically you know, flowing through this uh, circuit as a whole. Okay, now it's basically uh, diverging, or rather, basically, you know, dividing itself into two branches. That's our I1 and I2. We need to just find out the current I2 that's flowing through the resistance R2 right over here. But before we do that, in order to find uh, that of I2, we can see that since R3 and R2 are in parallel, so the voltage drop across the uh, nodes A and B uh, would basically be actually the voltage drops that would be occurring across that of R3 and R2 in common. So R3 and R2 would basically be having the same voltage drops since they are connected in parallel with each other. So let's find out the uh, parallel voltage drop. Okay, so VAB, that's the voltage across the nodes A and B, would just be given by the net current flowing through the circuit, that's I, 
that we found out over here multiplied by the parallel resistance between that of R2 and R3. So we're basically going to get I multiplied by R2, R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So there you go. So now you can see that since R2 and R3 are in parallel over here, so we first need to find out the voltage that's this particular voltage which we just call it VAB. That's the voltage across the terminals A and B. Okay. And I notice that since VAB, this voltage VAB, since it's in, uh, I mean, uh, you know, since the uh, resistances R3 and R2 are connected in parallel, so this same voltage that's VAB is appearing across R3 as well as R2 over here. So basically, by dividing uh, the voltage that appears across R2, that's VAB, we're basically going to obtain the short circuit current or ISC. Okay, so there we go. We get it by dividing VAB by R2. So now VAB is nothing but this. Uh, okay, right over here we've obtained VAB. So it's basically going to be I R2 R3 divided by R2 plus R3 multiplied by, or rather the, this thing divided by, okay, that of R2. Okay, so here we can see this R2 and R2 would cancel off and we're basically going to get I R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So that is basically our short circuit current that we're basically looking for uh, in order to simplify this network. And now from here we just moved straight into point number three. Now here step three just says that short all the voltage sources and open all the current sources. Now we can see from this uh, network over here that there is only a single voltage source named by uh, Vs. There are no current sources at all. So we just need to short this thing, okay? And upon uh, modifying our network over here, we'd get something like, I mean the network would ap appear something like this as we can see. So but again applying the same concept from the uh, Thevenin's theorem looking at the network from this open ends okay and imagining that a current would basically be entering through uh, this uh, terminal C and would be leaving through B okay we'd basically obtain the uh, equivalent or rather the internal resistance in the very same way that we just did for the Thevenin's theorem. So here the internal resistance as I said would just be equal to that of the Thevenin resistance that we obtain in case of the Thevenin's theorem. So we just put it here straight away. Now that's going to be R2 which is of course in series with this uh, current if we just you know imagine this stuff over here plus R1 and R3 in parallel. Okay, so there we go. So now this is going to be something uh, that we're likely to obtain, you know, something like this. So this is basically our internal resistance for the circuit. So now we come to point number four, or rather step number four, which says that the find the R in, that's the internal resistance of the network, I mean of the uh, resulting circuit of three, looking through the open load terminals. Well, 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 we already did that right over here. So it seems like we're just getting the hang of what we need to do. Okay, so that's good. That's really good, I should say. And now finally we come to the step number five, which says that connect R in, that's the internal resistance of the network, ISC, that's the short circuit current to the load, shorted load terminals, and RL, that's the load resistance, which is of course R4 in this case, in parallel to get the simplified network. Okay, so we're just basically going to do that, and let's find out what the simplified network looks like. So there we have our simplified network using Norton's theorem. Okay, and you can see over here we have this current source, okay, which is of course the short circuit current through the short circuit load terminals, and its value is, as you can see, we had obtained earlier uh, over here, that's just given by ISC equals to IR3 by R2 plus R3. So that's exactly the value of the short circuit current through this uh, current source, and we have also the uh, internal load, uh, I mean the internal resistance of this uh, network, represented by uh, the same Thevenin uh, resistance as we had obtained previously in the Thevenin's theorem. So that's values given over here, that's R2 plus R1 R3 divided by R1 plus R3 and over here we have our load resistance that is of course R4 as we said that R4 is here our load resistance okay so with that we just come to the end of this tutorial discussion on Norton's theorem 
Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial learning Norton's theorem and it's just gonna be a short goodbye for now and don't forget to watch our next tutorials on circuit theory. So it's just a thanks for watching this video.